Today we're going to take a look at our first lesson in CSS and I'm going to start here on my fake board uh, because this works well. All right, so here we go. We're talking about CSS. So one of the first things I want to cover here is does that stand for something? Yes, it does. All right, here we go. It stands for Cascading Style Sheets. There you go, CSS, Cascading Style Sheets. Now we will kind of get into, eventually we'll get into more of why is it called cascading? It has to do with uh, which rules take priority over which ones and how does it all work when you write these, these style rules. But the thing we're really gonna concentrate more on today is this right here, okay, style. Uh, that's what this uh, we've been doing HTML which you know stands for hypertext markup language and HTML is all about the elements of a web page right the elements and it's things like uh, you know we've done headings and paragraphs I'm abbreviating and images and lists and uh, links anchor tags with links right these things are, are the structure of the page. Structure. You know, that's what's on the page. That's how you build the page. But you can't do all that much. I mean, we did a little bit with like bold, italic, underline, things like that. We did a horizontal rule. Uh, you can do a little bit to make it look a little better. But if you really want to make the page start to look better, you have to get into this right here. You have to get into CSS, Cascading Style Sheets. And CSS is all about adding style to your page. And color has a great deal to do with it, right? It's not, that's not all, but uh, color does have, you know, a lot to do with it. Not gonna lie. So uh, today what we're gonna get into as we start to look at at CSS is what is called a rule set and the best thing is just going to be watch me do you know some of them and then you'll begin to see how they work a rule set a rule set um, will have what's called a selector I'll show you that here in a second a selector and then it will have properties and values and the properties and values kind of work, they kind of work together. They kind of come in pairs. And you're going to see me do that. If you'll just watch, you're going to see me do that. And you'll start to catch on to how this works. The selector kind of tells, okay, which HTML element is going to be affected by these properties and values? Is it a paragraph? Is it an H1 heading? Is it an H2 heading? Is it an image? Is it a list? You know what? The selector tells what's going to be affected and then the properties and values say, okay, so what happens to those uh, paragraphs or headings or whatever. So we're going to look at a rule set uh, in just a minute. Now, you're going to hear me say a lot as we're working in CSS, we're going to talk about curly brackets. That's what I call them. I'm going to use that all the time. Curly brackets. What in the world's a curly bracket? Well, on your keyboard, it's those guys right there. <clears throat> right and any time that you see something that's above on the keyboard you have to do what you have to shift All right it's right next to the letter P the curly brackets are right next to the letter P on the keyboard and uh, there's a, a left one and a right one so you have to open them and close them and you have to shift uh, if you're going to type them right a lot of code editors help you out and kind of put curly brackets in or curly braces. Sometimes people call them braces. I might even call them braces sometimes, but curly brackets, curly braces, uh, whatever. They're right there. Next letter P, you have to shift to get a curly bracket. All right, so let's take a look at everything that uh, I've got for you uh, set up. This will all be linked up on, on Google Classroom at the time that I'm recording this movie. It's not, but it will all be linked up and provided for you on Google Classroom. There's a handout to lead you through the day. You're gonna be uh, creating some rule sets and you're gonna to have to make a rule set for H1 uh, headings, H2 headings, H3 headings, and paragraphs. All right, so that's four rule sets that you have to make. There's also gonna be some properties that you have to use and they are listed right here. They'll make more sense in just a minute if you'll keep watching 
uh, color property, text align, background color, font size, font style. Those are all things you have to use in the assignment someplace. Um, uh, I've got a couple of other assignment notes here for you. There's code that you're going to open up that I provided. So you don't have to really write, you don't have to write HTML code today. You're going to write a little CSS code though. Um, let's see what else. Um, you could do one thing that could be, because color is going to be a big thing today. So you could do a Google search for CSS color names, or actually you could do HTML color names too, because it's the same thing, same set of colors. And like on this first link right here where it says HTML color names, uh, you'll see that would take you to a page that looks like this. Now, the, the, the thing that you may or may not like about this page, uh, the, the names of the colors are, are kind of the key here, and they're alphabetical, right? So up here I've got Alice Blue and Antique White and Aqua, and they start with A, and they move, their all, move all the way down to, you know, I'm in the R's and... S, T, uh, there's yellow, green, white. See, it's alphabetical. Alphabetical by the name of the color. And you see what they are, right? You can use basic things like green, blue, red. But there's a lot of other colors that you could use. Medium turquoise. Look at that. There's maroon. There's light sky blue. So you've got tons of options when it comes to colors. Now let me go back a, a, a mark here. And this one... I did. Uh, I, I searched for CSS color names, and my second search result takes me to this page, which some uh, some people like this better. You still have the same exact names here, like crimson and fire brick, and deep pink and coral and tomato. Uh, it's the same set of names, but they're more grouped by color families, right? Uh, so here you've got oranges, and here you got kind of yellows and light greens, and here you got you got purples whole bunch of greens here greens and you get into the teal um, you know that uh, aquamarine uh, here you got a bunch of blues um, light steel blue I see in there uh, there's a ton of blues and there you got some browns and tans uh, really light colors like white smoke and floral white and and grays right all the grays here all right so so you know what I'm trying to show you here is that you have you can find a bunch of color names that you can use and again if you'll just keep watching you'll see how these color names are going to be used uh, in this assignment the other thing that will be hooked up and it's not at this moment right if I go to um, golly I can't even find my there we go if I go to Google Classroom night right now it's not not hooked up but there will be a link to uh, some code that will be here. Let me refresh this page. That'll just be faster. All right. It'll. It'll. Uh, there's going to be some code here that says CSS01 start. Right. Um, it's a link for that. And so you'll click that, and you'll have to do view code. I'm going to remix this. Uh, you'll have to do view code, and you'll have to remix. And you might want to rename. I don't know if you want to rename or not. It's up to you, really. But you have to remix it. So you're going to have to remix it. And so let's take a look. The HTML has been provided, right? I'm just using Harry Potter stuff as something to use. Okay, we've got uh, the Houses of Hogwarts. And there's a short description of Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, and Slytherin. Uh, and there's paragraphs, right? Okay. Um... I should have looked up my Harry Potter house colors, but I, I didn't. Uh, so you'll just you can use whatever colors you want. All right, so so here's here's how this is going to work. This is the index.html. Do not change the name of that at all. Leave that just like it is. This page, this index.html, is connected to this other page that we have never even talked about over here this style.css they are connected I'll show you how they're connected they're connected by this thing right here it's been sitting there the whole time we've been doing code.org and we've never said a word about it just because we didn't need it yet but now we're gonna we're gonna start kind of paying attention to that you don't really have to change that at all but look at what it says there's a link and the relationship that these two pages have is that the CSS is a style sheet for the index.html a style sheet is just going to have a bunch of style rules on it. All right. And um, 
the 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 link the href the link is to style.css and you see that's the name of this style sheet over here you can have all kinds of you know style sheets and with different names but this is saying the index.html page is linked in a relationship it's complicated i'm kidding it's not complicated it, it's in a relationship with this style.css what's the relationship well the style.css is a style sheet for this page and that's the name of the style sheet so they're connected okay well so let's go over here to style.css and start looking at what you are going to be working on and again you might want to peek every once in a while at the handout that's that's popped on because it has um, some properties that I want you to use uh, and it has rules that I want you to use too okay okay all right so let's let's uh, I got to get back to the right page now here's one thing you could do um, there's already a, what's called a rule set for the body of the page and it says background and it says white well gee could you change that sure could what if I said light slate gray and you can refresh and save and look at the page over on the right if, if it doesn't take effect right away use that refresh and save button that's over on the right and look I just changed the background color that's what style is all about it's about making it kind of look different all right so here's one of the things that you have to do I'm gonna I'm gonna click at line 5 there and press enter a couple of times you have to write some rule sets and one of the rule sets you have to write is going to be for an h1 tag so I'm gonna just put h1 right there it doesn't matter what line it's on but I'm just gonna put h1 right there and then I'm gonna start a set of those curly brackets now here's how I like to do it I'm gonna type the left curly bracket press enter a couple of times and then type the right curly bracket and then I'm gonna come back up into this space that I created between those curly brackets and this is where I'm gonna add my my properties and values alright now this is going to affect any h1 headings uh, that I might have in there so here's how you set up a property and a value you could I'll start with an easy one color okay and I'll put a colon so that's the property it's the color property now I need a value well if you're talking about color I mean I, I could say yellow and I need a semicolon at the end of that so that's the syntax for doing that it's color colon yellow semicolon now, I didn't have to use yellow I could have used any other color that I wanted to and you'll notice that it even it was given me if I go back here um, it's even giving me a list um, if I say dark look at that it's giving me a list of possible colors there so if I say light right so what maybe I want light golden rod yellow put my semicolon there and if you go look at your preview now that that h1 heading has changed sizes or I'm sorry changed colors um, so again looking back at the uh, there there's a you know text align and background color and font size these are all things I want you to try out um, so let's try I keep going to the wrong tab sorry um, let's try text dash align and even as I'm typing that property again code.org is look it's coming up with suggestions I think maybe you want this well you know what I do want text align that's what I'm going to use uh, and it put the colon in there for me and it even comes up with some possibilities of, of values that I can put in there look at that text align center bingo and I'll put my semicolon in there you always want to add the semicolon because that's what separates you know these lines here that tells that tells the computer that 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 line is done and I can go on to another one um, so if you look over on the right look now my houses of Hogwarts has changed color and it's changed alignment it's in the center uh, th oh cool cool right uh, what else could we do we could do font. let's try font style on this one so I'll go back over here and I'm gonna do font dash style and again see it's it's showing me okay this is what I think you want I could press enter right there and then this is another way to kind of do the whole italic norm, um, normal uh, bold um, um, things like that in fact I think I can even say bold but it's already pretty bold so maybe what I'll do there is say italic and put a semicolon and so again I'm looking over at houses of Hogwarts and it's centered and it's a different color and it's italicized and 
Cool. All right. So I'm, I'm going to move on to a different rule set now. And I, if you want to, I'm, I'm going to maybe pull this. Um, I'll pull this bracket up a little. So we have, okay, there we go. So here, let's look at how you build another one. I, I got to make one for H2s. Okay. So I go H2 and I make an opening bracket and I press enter a couple times and I make a closing bracket and I come back up here and maybe I want, uh, you know, that color thing's a good thing to get used to, to rules with. Color, um, light, green, semicolon. And if you look over on the right hand side, my, my H2, anything that was an H2 would change, right? Uh, it just changed. Um, let's see. Uh, let's make sure I'm, I'm going back to the handout. Um, let's do uh, fonts. Oh, let's do background color on this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so there's another property called background. Oops, background. And uh, again, when you if you type part of it, uh, code.org is going to come along and try to help you out. And I want to do background color. And that's one of the ways you're going to learn about CSS. It's going to show you a whole bunch of things that you could you could just try out what if I say background color black and if you look at my h2 heading over here um, it says a short description in that light green color and the background color has turned to black for wherever that that h2 heading is and that you know I, it's not bad it's not terrible I think it's working for me I'm gonna move on here um, there's no certain number of, of properties and values that you have to have for each thing. I'm going to make an H3, put in my brackets, all right? But the thing that you do have to make sure that you're doing to get the, pro the, the credit on the assignment is that you are, you know, you, you got to build all these. I want all these in there somewhere, right? All these got to be in there somewhere. Here, here's one that says font size property. Let's try that. Let's go um, for the H3s. Let's go font dash size. And these, uh, when you do font size, it's just in pixels. All right. So if I come along here and I'll, I'll do like 40 pixels, 40 PX semicolon. And if you look over there, and I, I'm probably going to change that because that's really big. 40 pixels, that's for Griffin, the word Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, Slytherin. Those are all H3 headings. And so they just got bigger because I made a rule. I told them to. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna size that down a little bit. I don't really want to be that big, but I might make them like 20 um, pixels. Px. No, maybe a little bit bigger than that. Let's go 30 px. All right, I'm happy with that. When you're happy and you know it, you kind of move on, right? Font size. Uh, let's go color. Sorry, color colon. Uh, you, you put a property and the, then you put a colon. And then um, you, you put a value that goes along with it there. Uh, now we're going to, you know, somebody might say, well, I want to make the word Gryffindor a certain color and the word Hufflepuff a certain color. We're going to get into that later. All right, so color for uh, the H3 headings. Let's go, I don't know, we'll go red. I'm just kind of throwing something in there. That's maybe not the greatest color. Let's go more like maroon. Uh, yeah, and semicolon there. Okay, so if again, if I look at my preview, all of the H3 headings have now been changed to a maroon color. Cool. Um, I bet I could even go font dash style colon. Uh, no, I think that's controlled. I was going to I was going to do an underline, but it's controlled with a different property, so that's okay. And the only other one I have to write here is I got to do something for paragraphs, right? So I'm going to p and set my brackets. And let's go color colon and maybe I'll make my paragraphs ivory. So see, they have changed color. Uh, maybe a semicolon there. Uh, I'm going to throw in a background color for the paragraphs. And uh, I think I'll make them kind of a darker. Uh, let's go look with a dark gray semicolon. That doesn't look very dark, does it? Oh, well. Um, uh, so yeah, it's not terrible, not terrible. Now let's make sure that I have, um, I did a color property, I did a text align, I did a background color, I did a font size, 
maybe I'll change the font size on the paragraphs. I did a font style. So I've done all of those. And I also did all of that. I did a rule for H1, a rule for H2, a rule for H3, a rule for paragraphs. <gasps> I think I'm just about done here. Although I may throw on just for kicks. So I did a background color, but let's do font dash size. And remember font size, if you're going to play with that, is in pixels. 24 px semicolon and that didn't change a whole lot let's bump that up a little bit 30 px fresh and safe hmm. looks okay all right so the, exactly how you style it is going to be up to you um, I'm just a little bit surprised that that dark gray is not any darker than than what I got but anyway that's okay um, but yeah this is the kind of thing you know, you're gonna take code that I wrote and you're gonna add these some rules on the CSS page uh, you have to have a rule for the h1 a rule for the h2 a rule for the h3 and a rule for the paragraphs and again you might want to be checking on that handout you got to make sure somewhere in there you use these five right I want those in there if you explore with some other things I'm not gonna fuss about it but uh, you got to use at least those five all right, CSS all begins. Woo! We get some fancier web pages. Uh, your turn.